tocar fondo, tocar fondo, oh boy, oh boy, <laughs> this is not a good, I mean, it's a use, useful, common one, but it's not, uh, it's not a, a good phrase that, it's a good phrase to learn, but not to actually use it because we're talking about something sad or something concerning. And uh, tocar, tocar means to touch or to play. If you play an instrument, for example, the piano. Tocar, yo toco el piano. I play piano, okay? Um, also means, tocar means to touch. No me toques, don't touch me. Okay, so <laughs> that's uh, that's the, the meaning of this verb tocar. But when you add fondo, fondo, fondo means bottom, the bottom of something, you know, or yeah, for example, think of a uh, well, right? El fondo del pozo. We're talking about the bottom of the well, you know, like the absolute bottom of something. Now, this phrase means, let's see what this means. Oops. It means to hit or to reach rock bottom. So, <laughs> I mean, it happens in life. I don't know why I'm laughing about this, um, but it happens. Sometimes life is difficult and you have not... You don't have to, but sometimes it happens. You you hit rock bottom, right? So it's po a positive thing to do is to, you know, continue working hard, try to get out of that situation and be positive ab about that for sure. So tocar fondo literally means to touch bottom, you know, but uh, it's very similar to saying to hit rock bottom. Now, let's look at some examples using this phrase. Cuando mi novia me dejó, toqué fondo. Cuando mi novia me dejó, toqué fondo. Hmm, what does this mean? This means, let's see what this means. Oops. When my girlfriend left me, I hit rock bottom. Okay. It's a simple, simple-ish example, but uh, it happens. It happens, right? You're not saying what happened, why you hit, I mean, it says why, but ex exactly, you know, you're not saying exactly what you did right maybe you were sad very sad um or you know something happened something not positive happened but anyways let's break this down and let's see how this works cuando 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 means when okay if you have cuando in a question then it needs an accent mark right here Cuando, same pronunciation with or without the tilde, el acento, the accent mark, same pronunciation, uh, but just I, I needed to let you know that you need the accent mark when the word is in a question. Cuando, when, we don't need the accent mark because it's not a question. Cuando, when, mi, my, mi, my. Novia, novia, remember the V sound in Spanish is similar to B as in bell in English. So novia means girlfriend. Cuando mi novia, when my girlfriend, me dejó, left me, left me. Me, me, dejó comes from the verb dejar, which means to leave. So past tense, pretty tense, dejó means left. Toqué fondo. Here's a phrase. By the way, this is a verb. 
I, I said that multiple times already. And you need to know the conjugation of this verb if you want to use this phrase. The conjugation of this verb, tocar, is a little irregular. <laughs> so it's an irregular verb, which means you need to pretty much memorize its conjugation. So just keep that in mind. Now, toque fondo means I hit rock bottom. Okay? Perded tense. Toque fondo. Toque, that's perded, means I, in this case, I hit. But toque also means touched. Toque la manzana. I touched the apple. Okay? Toque el piano. I played the piano. Okay? So just keep that in mind. Uh, but tocar, if you use it in this sentence, it means to hit. Okay? To hit what? Rock bottom fondo. Okay? So sad situation, but it happens. I hope, uh, <laughs> you know... You don't have that situation. You don't feel like you are hitting rock bottom because that's not a good feeling. <laughs> that's not a good feeling. Excellent. Now, let's look at the next example and let's see, uh, yeah, just how to use tocar fondo. A veces hay que tocar fondo antes de poder empezar a recuperarse. A veces hay que tocar fondo antes de poder empezar a recuperarse. A lot of R sounds, right? <laughs> It's all good. <laughs> It's all good. You can do it. I believe in you. Try, try to repeat this phrase, this sentence, if you can. With me, of course. A veces hay que Tocar fondo antes de poder empezar a recuperarse. Okay. So this means, this long sentence means sometimes you have to reach or touch or rather hit rock bottom before you can start to recover. So this is just a statement uh, You might be saying this to a friend who's feeling, you know, <laughs> depressed, sad about a situation. Sorry, I'm laughing. I don't know why I'm laughing. I'm probably because I'm, I'm a bit nervous, but <laughs> don't pay me attention. What I'm saying is this is a positive phrase you can say to your friend if your friend is not having a good time, if, if uh, that person is going through something difficult. So let's break this down. A veces, a veces is a great, a great phrase that means sometimes. You can use it by itself if someone is asking, I don't know, like, ¿Te gusta ver películas? Do you like watching movies? You can say, a veces, a veces, sometimes. Or you can um, use this phrase as a part of, you know, a sentence. A veces, sometimes, hay, hay, means a lot of things. Hay comes from the verb, well, it doesn't mean a lot of things, but it comes from the verb haber, which we talked about in the last stream. So if you want to watch that stream, you can do that just by browsing my, my channel. You can find a bunch of different videos and a stream about haber, which means to have. It's a very good verb. I means uh, there is, there are, but in this situation, a veces hay que tocar. So you're saying sometimes you have to, um, you have to do something because I means to have as well, or the verb have. So a veces hay, sometimes you have, similar to saying that, a veces hay que You're adding more to the sentence. A veces hay que comer temprano. Sometimes you have to eat early. A veces hay que 
viajar. Sometimes you have to travel. A veces hay que caminar. Sometimes you have to walk. So a veces hay que, this whole sentence here, is very useful if you want to say, sometimes you have to do something. Okay? So in this case, um, sometimes you have to, right? A veces hay que, in this case, tocar fondo. Sometimes you have to reach or hit rock bottom. Antes is a great word that means before. Antes, después. Before, after. So, antes, before. De, antes de, that phrase, antes de, is used if you want to say before, da, da, that. okay? So, antes by itself means before. But if you want to add more to that word, if you want to make a, a sentence, add more to that, then you need to use the antes de, antes de, da, 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 before, da, da, da. In this situation, poder, poder means can. In this situation, poder means you can. Antes de, poder, before, you can, da, da, da. For example, you can change poder because we have poder in the infinitive way, which means it's not conjugated. You can um, use verbs like that one without conjugating them uh, if you want to use antes de. Antes de comer, hay que cocinar. Before eating, we have to cook something, right? Antes de caminar, Voy a comer. Before walking, I'm going to eat. So it's a common thing to use antes de and then a verb in the infinitive way or form in Spanish. So keep that in mind. Antes de poder, antes de caminar, antes de desayunar, antes de leer. So just keep that in mind. It's really important. Before you can empezar is another verb. And it means start or begin, okay? Empezar. It's very similar to comenzar if your English, if your English, if your Spanish is advanced. So it's very similar to the other verb. Comenzar, empezar. So empezar means to start, to begin. Empezar, to start, start. A, empezar a. It's another phrasal verb uh, that uh, if you want to add more to the sentence, you need to use a, empezar a, and then you add the action. Empezar a comer, to, you know, start eating, empezar a caminar, start walking, right? So just keep that in mind. You need a if you want to add more to that verb, empezar. Recuperarse. In this case, we're talking about recovery, okay? Recuperarse. This is a reflexive verb because we have se. A recuperarse, okay? So that's the verb. It's not conjugated. We just added the reflexive pronoun se. And uh, we have recover. Empezar a, very similar to start to. And then we add the verb recuperarse, recover. Okay? So it looks difficult, but it it's not that difficult. So you just have to pay attention to how Spanish works. And know these little tricks, you know. Antes de, for example, this part here, antes de, and what comes after that, right? In this case, an infinitive verb, poder, antes de, a veces, for example, great phrase to learn. And of course, the phrase we're learning, tocar fondo, tocar fondo, to reach or to hit 
rock bottom. So once again, a veces hay que tocar fondo antes de poder empezar a recuperarse. Sometimes you have to reach or hit rock bottom before you can start to recover. Excellent. So <laughs> it looks complicated, but it's not, it's not that complicated. You can do it. I believe in you. Tocar fondo. Remember, it means to hit or to reach rock bottom. <laughs> 